Hello again, my name is Marlo Lobley, and in this video I will show you how to create a LibGuide and then some of my favorite features of LibGuides. So one of the best things about LibGuides is the ability to copy content from one guide to another, or even copy content from someone else's guide that was made at another university. So you can see here when I go to create guide, I can either use an existing guide that I have created or someone um, on my Lib Apps account has created. Um, and when I say on my Lib Apps account, I mean someone else at my library who also has a Lib Apps account. Or I can search for a guide that someone has shared with the Lib Guides community. So, um, when you make a guide, you get to choose whether you want it shared with the LibGuides community or not. And um, you can set the name and the description. You can make different types of guides, um, which if you get Spring Share, and um, there's some help documentation that can help you learn what these different types of guides are. Um, and then you can assign it to a specific category. Um, so say if you want, um, all of your guides like our guides in the home category are guides for the home page of our website and they have a different look and different CSS rules than the guides on the in the other groups. You can also make a password protected guide and um, say if you're teaching a class and you only want the students in that class to access it you can password protect the guide. So I'm just going to start fresh to show you what a blank slate looks like in LibGuides. So it will, depending on your settings, automatically populate the guide with your profile box. And, and again, this information, if you wanted to edit any of this, you would only go to one place and your profile in LibApps to edit it, and then it would update in every place that you have this box. So that is very helpful. And you can see here, I can change the layout. So I can have lots of different options for the columns and the column widths. So, and um, this to column 2575 means that the smaller column will be on the left and the larger column on the right. You can also move boxes around on the page. So say I want that in a smaller column, I just go to page and boxes and move. And then to add content, you start off with adding a box. So, you name your box and then you can display it without the borders and the title and you can also put it in draft mode so if you're still building your content and your page is live but you want to work on your box more you can build it in draft mode and there's also different types of boxes that you can use so you can make a separate box with its own tabs and now this can be confusing sometimes to users, so I would use it sparingly. Um, if you saw the previous video, you saw on our home page we had some rotating pictures at the bottom of the page. That was from a gallery box. And then a profile box is just like the one here, but you can put in a profile box for another person in your organization with a LibApps account. You can also reuse an existing box from another guide. Now this is very helpful because um, you have the option to only update the information in one place and it will update in all of your guides. So this is very helpful. We have a reusable content guide um, where we store things and this guide is not visible to the public and it's just for where we store things that we reuse a lot on our other guides. So you can see here, I'm going to select the box for our current hours and if I leave that blank it'll just be named current hours. I can create a copy of it which means that I could edit this one instance but then if I make a change to the original current hours box it would not update this copy. So I'm not going to update that 
or select copy for this. And so then it won't show you the box here because it's not going to allow you to edit it unless you go to that original M box under reusable content. So to preview the guide, I can click the icon of the eye at the top. And there you can see the guide so far. So let's add another box and this time let's pretend that we're going to add some different content. So rich text HTML is just what you would write to write, put in normal text or images. And a database, how I said that you could, and looks like that's having trouble loading today. And in the previous video, I pointed out that we list all of our databases through A to Z databases and libguides. You can add a link to a specific database um, into your individual libguide. You can add a link to anywhere, um, a media or widget. So if you want to embed a YouTube video or another um, widget, uh, you can use that. You can put in a book from the catalog, which is where you put in the ISBN number of the book. Um, looks like we're having some internet problems today, so that is not loading. And you can put in the ISBN number of the book and it will populate the title and um, the cover, and you can put in the call number and put in a link to a book. And I believe I showed that in a previous video as well. And you can upload a file, RSS feed, um, a guide list. So if you want to refer to other guides that you have made, and um, the poll option is very helpful. And then you can put in some search boxes like a Google search box, or we have some code that we put in the widget option and put in our discovery search boxes. And then if you have LibAnswers or LibWizard, you can also put in items from those areas. If you want to edit, um, you can edit the name of the box by clicking the pencil in the border of your box. If you want to edit your content, um, look for the edit button on the right-hand side of the box. You can create friendly URLs by clicking the button and then typing in whatever you would like. And, and the same for the tabs. And you can, after you make your friendly URL for the main guide, and you can make a friendly URL for each tab. And you can also add more tabs. And now, like I said, all of this is customizable. And you would do that in this guide custom JS CSS. And so if you know a little bit of JavaScript or CSS, you can use that. And there's also some options you can use in the tab and box options. If you want to um, really customize your guide, I highly recommend using the SpringShare help website. And uh, you can access this even without a SpringShare account. They have lots of training um, and recorded videos that can help you. Their help website is very thorough and helpful. Um, I highly recommend checking it out if you are using SpringShare products or thinking about using SpringShare products. Okay, that is everything um, that I have for this video. And um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and contact me. And you can see my contact information there on the screen.